Okay. We are recording. Okay, so the next thing we have is inferential statistics. So inferential statistics is going to use sample results to make decisions or predictions about a population. Okay, so we're not going to get into that until probably chapter 7, 8, and 9 in inferential statistics. Okay, so an example of that would be where a company finds out that 60% of its revenue comes from online sales, so it makes the decision to go fully online. So next we have a population. Now this is going to be one thing that we're dealing with in chapter one, the difference between a population and a sample. Okay, so a population is going to be, the technical definition here is the collection of elements. Okay, collection of elements, that's a technical definition. So what does that mean? So that is any piece of data, so numbers, people, times, oh, where'd that go? Okay, um, the biggest hint that I can give you guys when you're seeing if something is dealing with a population is the word all. So if you see the word all, we are dealing with a population. Okay, so all Americans. Or all students in a class. All employees in a company. The word all. So I'm going to bold and underline that. It already is bold. I'm going to underline it. All right, parameters. Okay, are going to be just proportion, or not a proportion, just a portion of a population. that is collected for study. So an example of that going from the population, so all Americans, we're gonna say uh, all Americans aged 18 to 34. Or you could say company revenue from 2015 to 2019. Okay, you're setting parameters on either side. So think brackets, okay? A certain age group or a certain uh, years that we're looking at, certain classes of something that I'm looking at. All right, next we have a sample. I'm going to change. 
I'm going to change my font here just because I feel like it. That looks nice. Okay. So we have a sample is a proportion of the, no, I keep saying proportion, a portion of a population that is collected for study. So we can put parameters on something. And we, But here's the caveat, okay? So, yeah, I have them written down as the same thing. Okay, so a sample is because we can't get all of them. So if we say, all right, I want to do a survey on all Americans, and then I'm going to take a parameter of Americans age 18 to 34. I cannot possibly survey every single American age 18 to 34. So I'm going to do a sample of Americans that are 18 to 34 that represent the population of all Americans that are 18 to 34. So that's where the difference is. Now, with the company revenue, I can look at every single company revenue from 2015 to 2019. So that would be where it's a little bit different. Okay. So, but when we are doing like the difference between population sample, we're really looking at population sample, population sample. Okay, so the parameters are just kind of putting these restrictions on it. I'm looking at a certain time period or certain age group, um, certain ethnicity, things like that, that you typically read studies about. Okay, so even if you wanted to look at all of the graphs lately, like the COVID graphs, they have it by age group. Okay, those are the parameters. So a sample, you would say a group of Americans... aged 18 to 34 collected for study that are representative, we'll say that represent a proportion of all Americans that age. Okay, so I don't want to just go down the street and get, you know, a group of 18 to 34 year olds that all live in the same neighborhood, because those are not going to be a good representation of all Americans that age. I want to try and get a group of Americans that are going to represent the entire population, basically. This font's too separated for me here. I think I might just go back to Ariel. There we go. Okay. We get down here to a statistic. Statistic. So I got a group of Americans that represent that, and I'm going to run some data and I'm going to come up with a statistic. So it's just a characteristic of my sample. So a characteristic of a sample. Okay, so then an element of a sample is going to be each individual piece inside of your sample. So we will say here a, the specific subject being studied. So each individual So what you notice here on some of these, I'm giving you the book definition and then kind of the 
in my words, definition. The test is going to be in the book definition, but I want you to also understand what it means. So that's why I'm giving you my take on it as well. All right, next we have a variable. So this isn't gonna be like it is in math where it's like a letter that represents a number. This is, a variable is something that changes. It is a characteristic under study that assumes different values. or different elements. So let's just say you're surveying a group of people aged 18 to 34. Okay, inside that sample, you're gonna ask each person a yes or no question. It's gonna change based on each person. It's variable. Okay, yes or no is your variable. Constant is a fixed value, it does not change. So in that example I just gave, what doesn't change, the question doesn't change from person to person. The data set, that's going to be taking all of it and going yes, comma, yes, comma, no, comma, no, comma, yes, putting the answers from each one. So it's a collection of observations of one or more variable. That's your book definition. And then the observation is that yes or no. So it's the value of the variable for an element. Okay. Just want to talk about the population sample thing a little bit. So, we talk about the population of something we have. So, we have a study that we're doing. So, let's say, um, let's think of a study. Um, let's ask, I don't know, we're going to want to know if all college students will ask if they have a job. All right. Do college students have a job? Okay, so this is a simple yes, no question. Um, so this would be the type of study would be a survey because you're just asking the question. Okay, you're not collecting numerical data or anything like that. It's just a yes or no question. So this is a survey. Okay, there's different types of responses to a survey that you can get. What we want to do is we want to do as much representation of college students as we can. So what we would have here, and a visual to represent this, I'm not that great at drawing on my new tablet yet, but this is your population. Okay, this is all college students.
Okay, well, you want to get a good representation. So what you're going to do is inside of there, you're just going to take a little sampling of students. Okay, so a sample is going to be part of the population. So you're picking out a sample of students and the way you pick that out, there's many, many different methods. The best method that you can use is randomization. So you basically use a random number generator or you put everybody's name in a hat and you pick things out. That's randomization. That's gonna be the best way to get a sample. Okay, so that's just uh, example, population, sample. There's many other examples you can do. You can do um, all college students. Then you could do all female college students. Take all, just the females out. You could do a certain age parameter on college students. So lots of different types of samples that you can do. But know that if you have the word all in the problem, that's going to be the population. And then inside of that is a sample. So another way you could do that, even getting, you can have small populations. Like I could say all students in my statistics class, and then I could survey just a, a few of you guys. So those are other ways you can do it. As long as you have that word all there, that's gonna be your population piece. Okay, I think that's it for this page. Yeah, okay, so then types of data. So this survey response is just yes or no. So that's this first type here, which is qualitative data. Um, another way we say qualitative is we say categorical. And this is where it does not have a numerical value. Um, or the numerical value it has is meaningless. Like it's not able to be put in an order, like the numerical value is actually its name. So an example of this, eye color. Okay, that is, you could collect a survey on eye color. Um, it doesn't have numerical value, you can't put it in order. And then you have qualitative, or sorry, quantitative. So root word on qualitative is quality, so you're measuring on the quality. Quantitative, the root word here is quantity. So that's going to be a numerical value. Move it just a little bit smaller and it all fits. All right, so quantitative is measured numerically. And there are two types of quantitative data. You have discrete, which is countable and your keyword for this one number of so for example number number of siblings number of siblings everyone in this class has number of number of discrete and that's spelled wrong Continuous is going to be measurable. So an example of continuous is height or age.
All right, survey is given to a sample to collect data. A census, which is actually going on right now, is given to the entire population to collect data. There was someone walking around my neighborhood trying to get census data today, people that haven't responded yet. Um, it is pretty impractical to rely on census data. Because what about homeless people or undocumented immigrants or people who just don't re answer question? Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a specific whole you're, population census, right. Right, the one like the one we're well, I'm talking about the lady going around the neighborhood trying to get people to answer. That one, yeah, it's fairly impractical. But let's say um, like if it's just the college students here, that's not as impractical because you can figure out a way to get everybody to answer. You could. If you really, really wanted to, you could. But yeah, I'm talking about like the US census. But it is the best thing that we have to get some of our data. But it's not not entirely accurate. Um, and then there's there's two Weird types of data, we look at it in chapter one and then we forget about it, okay? So you have time series data, that is going to be where it's uh, time, it has to do with time. And we'll look at an example of that. So has to do with time. An example of that would be like looking at company revenue in a period for a time period. So like from 2015 to 2019. And then cross-sectional is just where it doesn't have to do with time. Because time is not a variable. So number, number of siblings, basically. So there's lots of um, practice problems in the packets. We should have time to work on some of them. So go ahead, take a look at these. I think with having the virtual classes, we'll have time to work on them. If we don't have time, then I can, um, I can create recordings for those if we do have to skip over some of the practice problems. But the first couple chapters go relatively slow. So we should be okay. So let's look at some of these practice problems. Why don't you guys go in, take a few minutes. Typically, I know some of you have had me before, I'll have you guys get together and work, but I'm not gonna encourage that now. Um, so just on your own, take a look. If you're lost, you can just, just take five minutes to look at it and then we'll go over it.
I had to unpause the recording. Okay, sometimes when I click on something else and then come back to this, that's when it doesn't work. And that's what it is. Let me open it one more time. Hold on. Hit the recording first and then open that. The Wacom in Intuos. And I downloaded the new software, but it doesn't, it's not compatible with Active Inspire, the newer version for some reason. So now my old one doesn't work and it's all messed up. So I have to um, figure that out, but I just got it yesterday. So I'm trying to do all this for you guys so that it, where did it go? So I can send you guys the notes after class and stuff, post them, all that stuff. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see if this works. Population is just for some reason when I click on something else with the mouse and then go back to this, then it starts being weird. So I gotta, I don't know, I gotta play with it more. Okay, yield of potatoes for 10 pieces of land. That's a sample, good. Okay, you're looking at certain pieces of a land. Uh, weekly earnings of all employees of a company. Population, all employees. Because you're looking at earnings of all employees. So, but you're looking at a piece of the earnings, but you're looking at it for everybody. So that's going to be the population. But that's a good, good question. Um, cattle owned by 100 farmers in Iowa. Sample. Number of computers sold during the past week at all computer stores in LA. Population. Again, because that is going to be, we're looking at all of the computer stores. Okay, then you have quantitative and qualitative. Um, so first of all, number of typographical, typo, typographical errors. I'm math, not English. This is why. In newspapers, quantitative, and then that is going to be discrete because of the number of. Ah, uh, this one is tricky. I didn't tell you guys the thing about money. So money can be argued either way. It's quantitative. Okay, so money is quantitative. Um, and you can argue it to be discrete or continuous. For the book, so for this book, I don't necessarily agree with it. I don't know what I'm writing. Money. Okay, they are saying money is discrete. I don't necessarily agree with it, but for your uh, homework and quizzes, we're going to go with money being discrete. I'm not going to put that on the test. Okay, so TV cable bills, that is going to be quantitative discrete. Spring break locations favored by college students. Qualitative. Number of cars owned by families. Number of, that's discrete. And then lottery revenues, that's money again. So then that's going to be discrete as well. All right, and then cross-sectional or time series. So average prices of houses in 100 cities. Cross-sectional, doesn't have anything to do with time. Salaries of 50 employees. Cross-sectional. 
Number of cars sold each year by GM from 1980 to 2002. Time. And then number of employees by a company each year from 1985 to 2002. Time. So you can see the difference there. There's a specific time period for those last two there. Now, all of these, I think all of these, Price, salary, because that's money, and then these are number of, number of. All of these are discrete. All right, so... Let's, what do we got? 2.1. I think this last part is 1.7. But we can go ahead and do it. Because it's just this part here. Okay, so we're going to get into a little of the symbolism, the mathematical symbolism and statistics here. So this Greek letter here, that is the Greek letter sigma, um, it means the sum. So that is adding things together. So that means to sum each x. Okay, you have sum of x, of all of the x values. So that would be like, you're going to see like this, x sub 1. That just means the first, x, the first variable or the first element plus x. 2, x sub 3, plus dot, 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 dot. Okay, so that's summing each of the x values or the elements in a data set. So this is the number of, so data containing only one variable, x values, number of students in thousands, currently enrolled at seven universities. Okay, so these are all seven universities here and these are the numbers. So we're just going over how to do these symbolisms here. You have X is the number of students, find the following. So you have the sum of your X values, that just means add these together. Okay, so you're doing um, Okay, now typically I'd pull the calculator up on the screen and do it, um, but I don't want to mess my pen up until I get everything figured out. So we add all of these together, and you should get 148. And then you have the sum of x squared. So notice the difference between this one here, and then look over to the next one. This one here is the sum of x and then take that and square it because of the parentheses. So this one means take this, the sum of x, and square it. So I'm going to skip over the third one real quick. That means that's 148 because that's the sum of x squared. Okay, so that's add all x's, then square Okay, so 148 squared is 21,904. The one in the middle, the square only goes to the x. So if you want to think order of operations there, you are going to square each x, and then you're going to add them together. Okay, so I would take each of these values and square them. So I have 7, and then let's see. We will go there. All right, so 7 squared is going to be 49. 39 squared 
is 1,521. So I'm just putting them underneath here. 21 squared, 441. 16 squared, 256. 3 squared, 9. 43 squared, 1,849, and then 19 squared, 361. And then we add all those together. Okay, so this, that would be the sum of x squared, adding those together, which is going to be, should be 4486. Okay, now you can do this in your calculator using lists, but I'm not going to show you that yet. I am going to show it to you in the beginning of next class. Okay, then let's take a look at B. So just with two variables, so X and Y and then having some of the sums. So you have the sum of the x values, that's just all of the x values added together. So that would be four plus 18 plus 25 plus nine plus 12 plus 20. So that should give us 88. And then sum of x squared. So you're going to take each of these x values and square those. So I would go 4 squared, 16, um, 18 squared, 324, 25 squared, 625, 9 squared, 81, 12 squared, 144, and 20 squared, 400. And then we would want to add all of those together. And that is going to be 1,590. Then you have the sum of x in parentheses squared. So that's your sum of x, which is 88. And then you're squaring that. So that's going to be 7,744. Then we have our sum of y. So that is, let's see, 12 plus, not 15, 5, plus 14, plus 7, plus 12, plus 8. So that should be 58. Then you have your sum of y squared. Okay, not in parentheses, so you're squaring each y. So 12 squared is going to be 144. 5 squared, 25. 14 squared, 196. 7 squared, 49. 12 squared, 144. 8 squared, 64. So you want to add all those together? And you get 622. Okay, and this last one is sum of x times y. So you're going to do x times y, each one, 
and then you're going to add those together. So if we come down here or up here, okay, you're going to go x times y. So 4 times 12 is going to give you 48. Um, 18 times 5, 90. 25 times 14, 350. 9 times 7, 63. 12 times 12, 44. And 144. 20 times 8, 160. Okay, and then add those together. Let's see. Eight hundred and fifty five. Okay, and we're going to stop there. But if you see, if you go on to the next page, you have the classwork. So what I want you guys to do for homework is to do that next page. And then we're going to go over this in the beginning of class. Next class, and I'm going to show you how to do this part at the bottom. Do it by hand, but I'm going to show you how to do it in your calculator next class. Okay, so make sure you bring your calculators. So your homework for today is to sign up for Wiley Plus. Get that started. Do the two-week free trial if you, um, if you need to, and then do this classwork. You can start on your Chapter 1 homework if you'd like, but we're not completely through Chapter 1. So if you're not comfortable starting it, then that is okay. Um, does, let me stop.